he's the director, he should have his little... Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> what are the words they say? Action. 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 Take one. Take one. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think that, you know, when I start and everything's dry, I tend to like to start again at the top of the picture because that way that can dry by itself while I work on something else. So, and luckily this black background is going to be fairly simple to paint in. So, I'm just going to start at the top and I've got my blackish color, my aubergine or whatever mixed up here. And I'm going to leave some light colors showing, like the rim lighting that we have on some of the beads. Um, you know, you got to kind of make up your mind if you want the painting to be super tight and realistic or not. Because if you do, if you want it to look kind of like a Brenda Kadera painting or uh, Denny Bond painting, you know, then you're going to have to really be careful about all these edges and paint very carefully right up next to the edge and you know, not have too much of this kind of double overlapping edging going on. Uh, otherwise, it just won't look clean enough. But if you're going for kind of a looser look, then you can not maybe worry about the edges quite so much. Although at the last part of the painting process, like the last 5%, I usually go around and kind of check all the edges. And if any of them are really ugly, you know, I will like use a stencil brush or something to kind of clean them up a little bit. I think it's really important that last, you know, 5% of additional checking over your painting and making sure that everything's okay is really important. It can make the difference between a, a good painting and a very good painting, you know, or a very good painting and a great painting. But I do like the way this dark color brings out, let's see now, I really block up against the carrot top. I like the way the dark color really brings out the, uh, mm -hmm. the leaves. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's because it has green in it also. Yeah, maybe. They're like analogous colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, just a dull gray wouldn't be as good. Mm So if I feel like I'm not getting it black enough, I'm just adding drops of paint. Into wet? Yeah, into the wet paint that's already there. <laughs> and I think it's another thing about this dark background, it's really important that the uh, shapes that you create with this dark background should be interesting. You know, and not just bland, like, you don't, this shape is not quite is good, but luckily the salt shaker is in there, you know. Um, and on my other painting over there, I kind of, you know, the uh, greenery that's on the right hand side, I kind of wish it went up a little bit higher. I think that would have made a better outline for the black part. And I'm a little concerned about this space right between these two um, because it's not very, it's not a very interesting shape. But what I could do, in fact, maybe I'll do this, I'll bring another. I'll make that look like there's another piece of the carrot right there. And I'll paint that green later on. So it won't be just, you know, oh. such a terribly simple shape. It'll be a little bit more interesting. I could even do that on the other one a little bit. Maybe just pretend like that, you know. Mm -hmm. more of this permanent magenta and perlene green. It's okay for me to talk because I... <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say anything you're going to regret. How <laughs> <laughs> close that is to the dark color that John Salmon did with Yeah, the, that's true. The red and green. Okay, yeah, how did he get his color? I forget now. He mixed. Did he mix a black or did he use a straight? No, black? He, no he used green and red. Green. Green. Yeah. Um, the Windsor green. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Windsor green. Yeah. Was it Windsor green? I don't know. 
So yeah, that is a good that mixture. Makes the darkest mm -hmm. and, and bright, brilliant red. Alizarin. Mm -hmm. Alizarin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What um, What's the composition of the black on your um, the first root picture that you did? Oh, it's the same. Uh, same combination. Mixture. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think. Uh, except it's really dark. It really, it's really dark. Well, I did it twice. Actually, the first it, time I didn't make it, I, in my opinion, dark enough. So I went over and did it again. Um, and you don't use the alizarin, though, do you? No, because I'm afraid it's staining. No, it's a well. It could be staining too, but it's also not necessarily permanent. Really? Yeah. Even the ones that are called permanent alizarin crimson are not necessarily permanent. Uh, we were having a big discussion about that in yesterday's <laughs> class. Let me just finish painting this. Yeah, I, I'm going to show you a book that talks about that a lot. The uh, Wilcox Guide to the mm -hmm. Best Watercolors. It's uh, an amazing book written by this British guy who is a painter but also kind of a scientist. And mm -hmm. he has done a big study of uh, all the different watercolors available. So this book came out in the 1990s, maybe 92 or something. The Wilcox Guide to the Best Watercolors. I forget what his first name is. Anyway, um, if you look up in here, alizarin crimson. See, he's got all the different paints in about 12 different brands. Mm -hmm. he, and he's done a lot of his own research. So he goes by, he rates them for like light fastness and so forth. Um, and uh, he combines the research done by the ASTM, you know, the American Society mm -hmm. for Testing Materials, along with his own research, and he evaluates each one. So, a cadmium red is very permanent, so it always gets an ASTM rating of number one, Roman numeral one, for like complete light fastness. Cadmium red, all the cadmium colors are extremely permanent. So they're, yeah, so you can't. Whereas alizarin crimson always gets a four. Huh. It's Fugitive. The worst is five. You only want to paint with numbers one or two. <laughs> number one, if it were number one, it would be completely permanent. Two is considered very durable. Three is considered marginal. <clears throat> so and this is not the same as transparency. No, this is light fastness. But light fastness. he's also he also has uh, he describes each one and how transparent they mm -hmm. are and. Uh, how they spread out, how much carrying power they have. In other words, how strong are they when you try to mix them with another color, and stuff like that. But the pink box, or the middle box here, is the light fastness rating. Like, this one here is called permanent alizarin crimson, mm -hmm. but it only gets a light fastness rating of three. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the problem is, alizarin crimson, traditionally, the real pigment of, al of alizarin crimson, is made from the same the matter plant, the root of the matter plant, it must be like a beet. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the matter plant is what they make rose matter from. So mm -hmm. rose matter is also not permanent. I never that. Yeah, uh, matter. Here's something called matter lake. Well, that's a modern alizarin crimson. is a synthetic matter lake color. The term lake refers to any inert chalk-like pigment which has been colored for the dye. Uh, so even those are, for the most part, not really light fast. But if you get to the rose matters, rose matter genuine gets a four. Mm -hmm. um, all of the rose, the real rose matters get a four. Now, if the company is referring to it as rose matter hue, it's not real rose matter. It could mm -hmm. be light fast. Mm -hmm. But you know. Um, yeah. Like here, for example, it's, it's, it's old, and I wonder if the yeah. rules have changed. Well, they have. When this book came out, these companies had to get on the ball. So has he put out a revised? Not lately, but he has a blog. He and, does. Uh, he has written other books, but he hasn't, as far as I know, made a new version of this book yet. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, I wonder... Daniel Smith has become so popular that mm -hmm. that's a relatively recent paint. Yeah, but it's not in here. here. But there's a website, what's it called? Hand, hand print. print. Hand print. They talk about this kind of thing. And you can look up everything mm -hmm. online. It's got, I mean, mm -hmm. more information that you could ever understand. Mm -hmm. or right, right. 
Like if you look at here, uh, among the rose matters, Talens has a paint they're calling rose matter, but it's actually a quinacridone red. Mm. And that's the only one that gets a decent light fastness rating of two. Mm. Okay. So um, that's why I don't use a lizard and crimson. Okay. Yeah. On the tubes that you buy or, or at the place where you buy them, is the ASTM well, rating now, um, um, it depends shown? on the brand. I mean, you know, like uh, Windsor & Newton, uh, and also some companies have their own system. So Windsor & Newton uses the ASTM system. So here it says light fastness one. This is raw umber, which you respect. It's not that large. Yeah, I know. These are big tubes. I use a lot of that. Um, so, let's see, here's, um, okay, this is interesting. I happen to have, because I, I have used alizarin crimson, I don't use it anymore. I took a workshop uh, with somebody a few years ago, and she wanted us all to use alizarin crimson. Now, this doesn't give the light fastness rating. Yeah. 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 Right. It says wow. series 1B. But that's price. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, series one price. is price. Actually, B is okay. So Windsor Newton, I, I think they used to use another system, A, B, C, and D. And so they're considering it to be somewhat durable. Not, I mean, a B is not as good oh. as an A, and A is the best. B. So you have double A, which is what having in red would get. Mm -hmm. Then you have A. And then you have B. And then you have C. I don't think you have D. So B is not a very good rating. Right. Okay. Why on earth would anybody pay this? This is only that was a It wouldn't last. They don't know anything. Well, know they don't, you know, you wouldn't you believe how many working artists don't pay much attention to this. Well, I, I also, uh, personally, I think, you know, I don't expect my works to last. 100 years, Me too. and they're not yeah. in the sun, you and I'm just practicing. They don't, it doesn't matter if it's in the sun. They'll fade anyway. Yeah, but I know, but... Here's, the, here's a really uh, good uh, cautionary tale. I, so I had a framing customer come in here, and we were talking about light fastness, and he told me about a painting his uh, by his mother, or that his mother had bought, of some beautiful flowers, and two years later, the flowers weren't there anymore. Oh! oh. Let me, let me show you something All that money. really amazing. I, I did this, I, some of you have seen this chart probably mm -hmm. five oh, yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a chart I made 20 years ago of the pigments I was using at that time. And I painted all these stripes and then I put a piece of map board down the middle and I hung it in this window for two years. Mm -hmm. Look what happened to that one. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what is oh, that? Gosh. Scarlet Lake by Holbein. Okay. Not there anymore. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good thing I didn't pay any poppies with that. These, all of these are paints or inks by Dr. P.H. Martin, Liquid mm. Watercolors. Mm. Don't use those. Mm -hmm. They're not light fast. They all fade. Mm. Wow. And what's the, uh, the other? Yeah, you just this one here, Purple Lake by Windsor and Newton. So it's all the lake, lake. the lakes. Well, not necessarily all the lakes. I mean, here's Crimson Lake. That's oh, that was okay. Here's, I've got a lizard and crimson on here, I think. It's gone. Well, I've got a lizard and carmine. Yeah, a realin, the yeah. old formulation of a realin by Windsor and Newton turned dark. Oh, huh. Mm -hmm. huh. Um, this is a lizard and carmine by Windsor and Newton, faded. Look at how this one faded. Gone. Oh, what is it? I'm just kidding. I never <laughs> <laughs> I never painted that one in. On the cardboard. Yeah. Um, opera did not really fade. Oh, wow. That's amazing. People are afraid opera's going to fade. Now, here's a warning for you. Holbein produces a couple colors that ha contain the word brilliant. They have brilliant magenta, brilliant pink, and brilliant mm -hmm. something else, rose or something. They're fluorescent colors, and they will fade. Ooh. And they admit that. They're fluorescent colors. Will all fluorescent colors? Yes, all are fluorescent it? colors. Because Daniel Smith is promoting these iridescent Well, the yeah, iridescence colors. I'm not sure about. That's not the same as fluorescent. Okay. Fluorescent dyes have a molecule in them that fluoresces when light hits it. But it gradually wears out. You know, it loses the ability to do that with time. 
and becomes dull, you know. So now they, like Holbein doesn't necessarily list the light fastness rating um, on the tubes, but if you go to the website, you can look it up and they will warn you about these. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but they sell the them in the store. Yeah, that's, right. nice. that's true. That's, that's why you have to have, well, I wish he did produce a, a new version of that book, yeah. but that's why Maybe before I started teaching again a couple of years ago, I went through that book and I made sure all the colors I was using were really light fast. I do my own testing. I've got yeah. my testing right here. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's fun to do. I mean, I enjoy it, you know, and it's important, very important. And the thing is, you know, yes, you know, you may not care about most of your paintings, how long they last, but suppose you do a really great painting. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Some <Someday. Yeah. laughs> Or what your kids really like. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of a selling point, too, mm -hmm. you know, it could be. I mean, although I'm a little leery about telling customers about that because then it gets them thinking. Well, oils have the same problem. Mm. They do. They do. Well, sure. These pigments, uh, you know, they're just some of them are just not light fast. Mm. Some, oh, some of the oil I things are so light. Yes. <coughs> so what? Dark. No, <coughs> those I think got uh, smoke on them <coughs> from car exhaust <coughs> and cigarette smoke. Stuff, you know, um, and dirt. Yeah, that's a problem. All right, it let's see here. It's very, I know. It's, uh, so well, much we, know. Uh, as your students, appreciate the work that you, yes, you do thank beforehand you. Yes. so that we don't waste <laughs> our money on a fake thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't think alizarin crimson is that bad of much of a problem. I mean, so many people use it. I think if it had really, a, really was a problem, people would have caught on to it. But it's still, there are a lot of colors that are good substitutes for it, especially. Now the quinacridone colors, which is a relatively new invention, I guess maybe 15 or 20 years old, they are excellent. They're very light fast and they, they come in shades of reds and oranges and maybe yellows that are, you know, uh, for that part of the spectrum, they're really good. And then for the blue and green part, the thalo colors are very light fast. And then for yellows, there's something called the aerolide dye colors, and they're very light fast and very powerful. So if you want to do a daffodil yellow, just use Hansa yellow is an aerolide yellow. Mm. Uh, that would be like the generic name of Hansa yellow. And uh, I happen to have gotten the Da Vinci brand of that, but then I found out that Windsor yellow by Windsor Newton is actually the same thing. It's aerolide oh, yellow. Yeah. So Hansa is the same as Windsor. Yeah, same Windsor and Hansa. So Hansa yellow is what Da Vinci calls it, and it's a cheap paint. But it's a good paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a good one to have. Okay, so let me just continue with some more. I'm just going to do a little bit more of this black background, and then I'm going to go back to the jar. So I see the edge of my towel is actually right there, which is kind of nice. Yeah, in my beginner class, I have them paint off one of those test sheets mm -hmm. with all of the, col the spots of color on it and then suggest that they put it in the sunlight and see if any of it fades. But it's a good idea to stick a few that you know will fade in there because you've got to have a negative control, you know. <laughs> In the back of my car window, I drove around. Oh, no, no. Exactly. Because it, it faces the sky, oh, right? Oh, boy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, some of these cars, like the Prius, the windows, oh, I know. you know, face <laughs> up. So uh, I did the same thing. And now, the other thing is that if you want to hang it in a house window, you got a lot of house windows now have a UV coating on them. Right. <laughs> so it may not fade. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> You're kidding. Trying to drive the water bottle. Because it's the toddler, you just come in and it's been a rough week, has it? <laughs> As you well know. You don't even have a name on today. You forgot who you were. It's you almost two months before. That's the second one. <laughs> I found it. Did I found people wear I those name tags? Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. and I did, did they like them or yeah. did they yeah. hate them? Yes. <laughs> like them. Oh, and yeah. mine had a crab on it. Thank you. Oh. I didn't need the good. Yeah. Yeah. 
oh. that, uh -huh. that if you can only settle for perfect, mm -hmm. there are all these things that won't happen. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. That's a great. Well, yeah. It's the enemy of creativity for sure. Mm -hmm. And I've I've read studies like people analyzing, you know, uh, women who are renowned beauties, mm -hmm. and they say they usually do have some sort of mm -hmm. imperfection. Yeah. And then they do a photo like of, I don't know, Sophia Loren or Elizabeth Taylor and. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. out whatever the imperfection oh, is, and they're not as beautiful. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It gives them character. See, Crawford and her bowls. She had mm -hmm. one time before she started her modeling career, she wouldn't mm -hmm. have that taken out. Hmm. And they told her not mm -hmm. to. Well, no, she began to think about it. she might have a scar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friday, the temperature's going to drop back down. It's going oh. down to 30. Mm. Oh, all this solar flares. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we've had such a great winter. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about driving down that short forest road in the snow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> mm. So what are you Yeah. Mm -hmm. We earned a nice winter. Yeah, yeah we did. The letters, you know, the the word Mason and the word, they're not very obvious on this picture, uh, but that's okay. You don't need to make them very obvious, just as long as there's a feeling that there are letters there, I think. Yes, it is. Mason? Yeah, when, when, when oh. he was being really obnoxious, I used to call him Mason Jar, because <laughs> he had a big mouth, a wide mouth. Oh, yeah. A wide mouth. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, I'm just wondering if I got that dark enough, but I can. I guess I can darken it later if I have to. He has his aunt do a pen tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. For college so, admission? No, yeah. he's a finalist for the PhD program. Oh, I see. Okay. Wow. So, I think they just want to. The professor wrote him that he just wants to check in with him. So it's like, oh, maybe maybe the decision's made. And he just wants to. Certainly. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the area? Urban planning. Mm -hmm. Something I feel that will not exist in this country anymore. But <laughs> I'm going to start working on the stripes now. Uh, I got to let this part dry before okay. I can do any more. So uh, for the stripes, I like I'm going to just use almost pure quinacridone red. That's what I like flowers. Whatever's on the palette. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the mystery color. And not. This is the hard part because I get wiggly, wiggly, wiggly lines. Well, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You don't want it to be too perfect. A little bit of wiggle looks really. good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there was a little bit of wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good when there are breaks in the cloth, I think. Mm -hmm. At least you have a chance to. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, no, no, but that would be hard. <laughs> well, it's so subtle. Yeah, the, the table, uh, mm. the linen that I had under that was damask and it had a gorgeous pattern, but yeah. I just, you know, it wasn't close enough for me to, to worry about it. But I thought, how the hell would you mm. do that? You, know, you just want to kind of suggest it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Susan, are you doing this on top of lines or just looking at Yeah, the no, there are lines here. There are. Okay. Yeah, I did trace this image and basically I did trace all those lines. Okay. Because that, you know, painting a pattern is kind of tricky, I think. You've got to have a, you do have to draw uh, mm -hmm. to be able to paint the pattern reasonably well. And I, you know, notice how the ones in the shadow, I really mm -hmm. think are a little bit brighter. I'm just going to add some paint here and there to make them uh, a little darker and uh, make them stand out a little bit more. And in this picture, some of the lines disappear in spots too, I guess, when yeah. the sun really hits it. Right, right. Yeah, where they're sunstruck, they get very light. So. 
just by having the variation too helps you. Mm -hmm. It won't be quite so straight. Yep. What colors did you use for the shadow? Well, uh, a mixture of, like I used a little bit of Quinn Gold mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, just kind of some of these colors that are on my palette here. Okay. And I put a little <laughs> blue in places, uh, probably verditer blue. But I really think having this striped cloth here helps a lot to, mm -hmm. for the picture. It pulls the paint together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of interesting because um, the painting you did two weeks ago of the cafe, mm -hmm. you had all those stripes going on. So we've got a little theme here of the. Did I? Um, well, they were they were horizontals. From, oh, the okay. From the, all the, the you know fence in the, the background. fence and the chair. So I yeah, that's say stripes, true. But right, horizontals right. going on. Yeah. yeah. It's your stripe period. Mm. <laughs> well, no, I think it'd be a lot of fun to do a whole series of these paintings, mm -hmm. and it would be a good idea to repeat some of the objects. You know, have some people when they specialize in still life, they always include a certain object or. Maybe not always, but they frequently use the same objects, and they become like their trademark. Like Dana, like I can't remember. Charles Reed and his ducks. decoy, yeah. yeah. So you wouldn't want to choose decoys, or people will think you're <laughs> copying. Charles Reed wannabe. Yeah. So Susan, for yourself, when you mm -hmm. paint, do you find that, let's say, you're doing you do painting like the beats, that mm -hmm. you want to do a whole bunch of them at the same time. You sort of stick I would with like to. I'd like to do more of these vegetable pictures. I'm really tempted to go into a little series of still life paintings. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. Now that I haven't done this in a long time, it's been a lot of fun. Wow, wow did I hear something fall? No, no I think it's like this. You know, it's oh, some kind oh, of heavy equipment. Oh, yeah, they could be. What's today? Today's Thursday, so it's not your recyclable people, but we dump the paint on in the trash day. I know. I know. It's taken care of. I know. Trash cans out there, I know it's a trash day. <laughs> but it is the, the whole thought of the cloth uniting the objects. Mm, got I know. These disparate objects yeah. with the cloth underneath it. Right. Somehow uniting it. It does. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if you saw the cloth before the stripes were put on and just the shadows, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I don't think. If the cloth had just been a white cloth mm -hmm. with no stripes, I don't think it would have worked as well. And I, I think that, you know, a lot of, there are some, a lot of fun kind of uh, dish towels out there. But if the pattern doesn't make much sense, uh, it's not as good. It makes, I think it's better if there's a, a distinct